dad, Kevin. Kelly's the guy that operates the camera over there. Um, <laughs> Kelly's been carrying his pager in his hand for 13 years, hoping it's going to rain. Maybe Chris will talk to us about that. But I want to thank everybody for coming today. I'm going to turn it over to Corinne, because Corinne has done a lot of work organizing this. So I round of applause for her for these. Place. 
I know that he would very much like to be here to encourage you, Chris, and to share our thoughts and our great impression of you, your patience, your courage, your determination, and most of all, your attitude. There's no doubt that you've been given a heavy load to carry. There's no doubt in my mind that you and your parents just had to accept that load. I think, though, that you had a choice in how you accepted that load. And you chose a very positive way to react by encouraging others to be organ donors. And not only are you working for yourself, but you're working for many, many other people who need the same transplant that you need. When I read about you and what you were doing, the words of Charles Swindle came to mind, and I'd like to take an opportunity to read just a little bit of that. He wrote about attitude. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm just picking out um, pieces that are particularly um, relevant for today. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on my life. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change the past. We cannot change the fact that people will react in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the string we have, and that's our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. I'm not sure when those words were written, Chris, but I think that it seems like um, he peered into your life and then jogged them down as a lesson to all of us. You exemplify his thoughts, you are our, our role model for all of us, and you are proof that our young people are strong and powerful. I can't come close to delivering a message with the impact that, that Chris has given you. He needs a transplant. He needs our help, along with many, many other people. I wouldn't even begin to try to do that. But I will add my encouragement for you to think about being an organ, don or organ donor, for you to talk to your family and friends about that. And you know, when you do that, you have to think about death. And you have to think about your own death. And that's not an easy thing to do. But I know Chris has done that, and if he can do that, so can the rest of us. Uh, <clears throat> Don't take your organs to heaven, I need them right here, will always ring in my brain when I think of you, Chris. I believe in miracles, I believe in prayers, and so I believe that you will get a new liver, and you will do all those things that you've not had a chance to do so far. It's been a pleasure to spend a little bit of time here with you. Um, may God bless you, your family, George. And may God bless you for thinking about being organ donors. I'd like to commend all of those who are planning this trip across the country and those people who had um, input in planning this session today. And um, in closing, uh, Chris, if you could come here, I have a, a certificate for you as well. It says, Christopher Knowles, I wish to extend to you my sincere congratulations on receiving this recognition of your volunteer efforts. You have set an inspiring example of responsible participants. Sincere congratulations on receiving this recognition of your volunteer efforts. You have set an inspiring example of responsible participation in providing for the well-being of others. Best wishes for much success as you strive for your goals in the years ahead. And that's signed by our member of Parliament, my husband, Paul Mackin.
They are busy today with other scheduling conflicts. Um, if you for a moment can just look around there, Christopher, you'll notice that on uh, most of those items there is a denim armband. Do you guys want to hold up your arms if you have armbands on? Okay. Um, within our school, um, grade 12 class started this um, little trend. What we decided to do was raise awareness before your arrival about organ donor awareness. So we asked students who were organ donors or who would like to become one to um, wear their denim bands just to show their support. So um, next we'll go along to um, presentations and donations. I'd like to call Emily Romarda from Community Challenge. <coughs> Challenge just wanted to um, give a gift to Christopher to um, let him know that we really appreciate him coming here and that he also inspired us to um, give a donation to the Trillion Gift of Life Foundation, which um, will go to research for our organ donor. So, thank you, reception together for us in uh, Brighton. I also want to acknowledge uh, the OPP, um, sorry, Officer uh, Knowles? Stone. 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 <laughs> uh, thank you for coming out here today. They're helping us out through the whole province of Ontario and their work is so important. Um, so thank you so much for coming out here today. Christy, want to say any final words? Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's right. 
Yo. Okay, walk in front of the van, Chris. It's a good cup. Yeah, he's Nippy out there.